All right. I'm going to do another. This is, I don't know if we're going to use this as an opening or not. Uh, you see me walk down here from the corn and inside the shop. So that's kind of where we have on uh, the lathe stuff. Today we're going to work on putting the sands together. And I'm going to put clips in. I'm not going to shoot this whole process. And that's what I'm down here early this morning to do is start that process. Uh, I apologize that I haven't been doing videos. As you heard me talk a minute ago, or you'll hear me talking, just walk down here at the shop and look at the corn. Excuse me. I have work an incredible amount of overtime. Our demands just went straight out the ceiling. And let me digress something, and I'm going to do this probably start. Uh, this is my hobby, one of my two hobbies. My other hobby is golf. Uh, this actually, my real plan with this shop or my, uh, my machines is I'm, I'm 59 and a half years old. I'll be 60 in November. I'm planning to retire from my day job at Eaton Corporation when I'm 62 and get 40 years of service here. So I have worked all my life very busily and I need something to keep me busy. That's what this shop's going to be part of the plan. And while I'm not a master machinist, and I'm going to be straight up about this, I'm not a master machinist. I do machine work for a living. I work with CNC ladies, and I do a lot of production work. I've been in the shop, and you've heard me tell this on other videos. I've done machining. I'm familiar with machining fairly much. I'm not familiar with all the little ins and outs of the techniques of some of the things you see. And one of the things I want to stress about my videos and what I'm trying to do here with my subscribers, I want this to be more of what this guy does when he wants to go into this as a hobby, whether he has any machining background or not. This is something you want to do as a hobby. This is what I'm doing. I'm not, I'm not a semi-production shop, and I'm not throwing off on the other, some other people. They're, they do really good videos. Um, Adam Booth, A-Bomb 79, and Tom Lipton both do great videos. And Adam especially <coughs> really is a skilled craftsman at what he does. And, but when you really look in their shops, you're looking at a, 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 a shop that somebody can make a living out of if they choose to in a job shop. In fact, you know, I also follow Keith Finner's channel, and in a bit, I'm a bit envious of somebody like Keith who can do not his talent, <coughs> uh, is more of the fact that he's able to make a living doing what he loves, and that is, and with not the compressors that some of us in these production environments have. And I'm going to digress just a minute. I have been, the, I work for Eaton Corporation, and the plant I work in, we make transmissions for Class 8 trucks. Eaton is sort of like the Bill Gates or the Microsoft of the transmission business for these trucks in the United States. Our market share has slipped a little bit. The main reason that has happened is that the quality of our products are compared to prices. But two of the main customers, uh, Freightliner and Daimler, which, you know, Freight, if you don't realize that, Freightliner is actually owned by Daimler Benz or Mercedes, if you really want to get technical. And they have about 30% of the truck market. And they're trying to produce their own transmission. And you know, they want to control the whole truck. And that is a big freeder, but I'm, you know, they're, but Eaton has done a really good job. They tend to market not to the OEM, but they tend to market to the fleets, uh, the Swiss, the JB Hunts of the world, the, the large fleets, and they, they, they take care of their customers. And that's the reason Eaton has been in business. And one of the things, if you don't know about the truck business, trucks are not like your car. 
It's not like you go and buy a pickup truck or a car. You go to the lot, here is pick your brand. This is what we have available. You go in, you order your truck piece by piece. And that is what's kept us successful. They have really good products. We have really good technologies. I'm still working with some people at work to try to be able to bring more of my video work in. Uh, they're just a little bit protective. And <clears throat> I've, got an, I've got to send an email to my HR manager who's going to send it to public relations and see if I can use some of my clips. I, again, with my work schedule, I haven't had the time. And that's the second thing I'm going back to is my work schedule. We are making product for our own plant, for our sister plants, uh, and they have changed or we've got new models that we're making. And the new models, we're having to make most of the parts because we're the first facility to make them. So therefore, we, have, we, we can't get our normal, either our sister plants or overseas facilities, they're not set up to make these parts. They, they could and they will eventually once the, the market gets to the point that this, everything's changed over to new, to new products. And so we're working overtime and, and they're not wanting to hire folks again because they don't just go out and hire machinists, they have to go through a training process or they want to use a contract employee or temporary and you're trying to take somebody who basically don't know squat about machining and train them how to make quality parts, you know. And when you work for a company like I do, you got a lot of people who are MBAs, well-meaning folk, but they're not machinists, they're not engineers. And they, they think that you can take a, a book or you can take pictures like McDonald's trains or hamburger flippers and you can make them make parts. And it works, but it's, it's tough sometimes. So that's the mode I've been at work. And that's why you haven't seen videos. So I'm going to shut this camera off, quit yapping, and I'm going to start my stands. So you'll come back here in a little bit. Well, also, <coughs> I've been t-shirt buying. And this shirt come the other day, and I actually wore it yesterday. This is the back of it. And uh, let me lay the phone. Well, I'll just make a separate clip. Now, let me just turn the shirt over. You've seen them. I, I particularly like red. So when I ordered my shirt from um, Teespring for eight uh, for Adam's campaign, I went ahead and got red because I particularly like red. Um, also, Tom Lipton read down here. Excuse me, I just kind of leave the phone phone out there. Um, Tom Lipton did his campaign to order one. I I kind of <coughs> hesitant about doing it, but the more I think of thought about it, is I know myself because I'm making videos how much time and trouble and we do it for the fun but uh, how much time and trouble it is so I thought I'd support these guys and help them get a little extra money to run their video channels because there's a lot of people get a lot of enjoyment out of it thank you morning uh, I'm working on finally getting around to work on the video uh, what you see here is an upcoming project this is a all kind of engineering ball turning frame. Uh, if any of the people who follow my channel watches uh, Chris or uh, his, he's been playing with several different ball turners. Now, this is the instructions that come with it. It's basically a kit. Uh, I've had one of these before. And I've got one, but I never, I, when I made it, I was kind of made some mistakes with it. And with the new lathe, I want a ball turner to make handles and frames. So this is the Allsham Engineering, or Allsham. Uh, there it is. Uh, they sell these kits on eBay. And... This is with the small parts kit. It's a little over seventy dollars. I'll show you. Uh, and uh, it, it, it basically you machine. You will see when we get ready to do this. 
and this is all the information. This is one of the things that come in this week, and I uh, want to share it on this week's video. Here is some more stuff that's come in the mail this week. Uh, I got a killer deal on these Serotip inserts. This is a cutoff tool. I'm going to use the new lathe instead of reworking that other, and I got a, a good deal on it. On found it on eBay from Ally in, Industrial for about 80 bucks. So it's, that way, I won't have to do no making of a new one. So there's that. It's, you've got a few inserts here, and I've got plenty of those. And across the room is a D15 backing plate. This here that comes in Grizzly. And this backing plate, I'm going to remachine it to mount that uh, collar on once I get laid up and running. So that's what's came today. Good morning. This is Thursday morning, uh, June, let me look at the date here, uh, June 11th. Uh, for the folks that missed my last weekend's video, there wasn't one. Uh, Mr. Jim Deadman, a.k.a. Country Boy Machining, was working overtime all weekend. And I, uh, basically, to bring you up to speed, this is about 6.30 in the morning, by the way. Um, you've seen the house across the road uh, where Jody and, and Mary Beth Black and their three kids live. And uh, Mary Beth actually does, uh, have, they call their little operation Triple C Farms after their three kids. Uh, they don't, they're not, they're related to my cousin actually mary beth is my second cousin she's uh, the daughter of my middle cousin who's the dairy one of the dairy owners and uh, <coughs> they she's a school teacher by trade so uh, i think she actually keeps a, a does a blog about what her and jody does and I noticed on Facebook the other day there was some plant talking about planting some soybeans. So I think she's going to be running the drill. Typical country girl, huh? Cook, clean, raise kids, ride a tractor. <clears throat> you can't hardly beat that. But what I was going to walk down here and show you is I think the other week I was doing a video and I put a clip in while I'm on my way to the shop about the cornfield. So. On my way to the shop this morning, I thought I'd walk down here and let you see how the corn's coming along. Uh, now this corn's going to be raised for silage, it's not uh, grain corn. And this is a special blend that they use, it's a tropical blend. It tends to do better in drier conditions when, when, the, when the rains tend to stop here, and this usually uh, midsummer. And if you get a really good rainy season, it makes a lot of a lot of stalk. Now, I have seen this corn be six, eight, ten, six, eight foot high. If you get a real rainy season, now there's not much ear to it. It's a small ear corn. It's not really good for the grain part. It's more for the bulk for the feed. And <clears throat> this is the field that I was showing, and that they was planting the other day. Uh, part of this is my mom's property. Uh, if you can see out across the back, it's the other part. A couple of these backfields actually belong to my mother and I. All right, so now we're gonna to walk to the shop and I'm gonna turn the lights on inside the shop and show you where we at on the lathe. Uh, I will go in a little more detail about this working deal. Um, I uh, had some clips made last week's video. I come the week before Memorial weekend. I took a week's vacation done some work in the shop very little and <clears throat> went to myrtle beach south carolina which is about five hours for a well-deserved vacation a couple of days and it was black bike week and i was actually going to leave saturday morning but decided to leave friday uh, i wasn't feeling good so plus they they locked the town down kind of overreacted about the black biker well we'll get into that's so a we'll digress i mean there's been some abusives and in all fairness to the myrtle beach people i can understand because it's they they even had to import police because it was you know to be safe um i'm trying to find a key this morning uh but basically i came back 
I was contacted to work overtime uh, Monday. Actually, I didn't lock the shop. Well, it's about living in the country. You don't have to kind of worry too much about it. Things being stole. But you do. But, and if you notice, the lathe's still in this box. That's what I was getting at. The lathe is still in the box because I've been working. I work from the last two weeks. Actually, the last, let's see, 17 days. Um, see, 14 and 3, 7, uh, yeah, 14, 3, 17. Uh, during the week, mostly 12 hour days. Now, this week I didn't. I turned the shop light on. I hope you can see. You still see the lathe. I'm actually started the process. That's why I brought the camera in. The lathe master's moved. I moved it yesterday. I left yesterday, left work about 11. I actually wasn't feeling good and decided that I just I come home and after I used the bathroom without going into gross details and you see there's a big mess back here because I'm getting ready to, to, to do work so basically this is where the lathe's going to sit where the other one was you notice I said I had wood floors the lathe weighs a thousand pounds so what I've decided to do and this is what I did yesterday as you'll notice there's a three-quarter piece of ply board is sitting on top of the floor. The, lathe, the floor didn't give. So when I leveled the lathe, I want it to sit on a single flat surface. So we've, what we've done is we added some three-quarter ply board here and screwed it to the floor. This will give us a, a one solid sheet, no two pieces for the lathe to sit on as we level it. I've already got the 220 wiring. I'm going to use a dryer plug, or that's what my intentions are. Now, once I get the lathe up, I may not do this, but my intentions is, there it is, is the dryer cord. I'm going to use a dryer cord. That's what I'm going to do is plug dry, wire the machine to the dryer cord. That's what I'm intending on doing. But we will see if that will work. Um, I do have on this table, uh, here I will show you, uh, this is... A similar one what I done is I pressed this together and I cracked it and you you'll see this in a, another video now this one works but it just don't give you as big a radius so I decided I will make a new one and this is the one I made and I didn't have a milling machine and such so I'm gonna make a new one since I won't make turn balls uh, there is another project laying here on the table excuse my messy workbench uh, that come today and I'm going to make a collet chuck for the Grizzly and this is an ER32 collet mount I found this on eBay for $65 I couldn't do I could machine this now what I'm going to do is I've ordered an extra back plate for the from Grizzly uh, and I'm going to take a back plate and I'm going to machine the black plate and then we're going to bolt this to the back plate so you can just take the cam locks and change it so this is another project you're going to be seeing us work on in the future. So this is where we had on the lathe today. I'm going to, today I'm going to start on the stands and hopefully we will get there today. We'll start getting the stands. I don't think the lathe will be set up today because I'll have to get my cousin's engine hoist. I may get see if he'll come help me Saturday. So they may do this Saturday. Friday I'm going to be out of town. Uh, my girlfriend who used to be my fiance Deanna uh, is needing to go to the VA and she is not feeling very well uh, so we will see one of the things I run into is I ordered six I thought there was three on each side and I see there's four well I've ordered these Minco and these are the rubber mounts I'm going to use. So they're going to be plenty big enough. They're supposed to hold about 500 pounds a piece. So obviously what we're going to do is we're going to put three on each stand. So I've drilled new holes. Another problem I'm running into is I can't get my bolts in. So I'm going to go to hardware and just get regular bolts to fit in. So that's where we're at today. 
There's leveling pads on board on one of the stands right now. Uh, see, notice I've re-drilled it, so I've got three on it, which should be sufficient. And you notice there's a real nice, expensive leveling pads. So that's where we're at. Well, folks, I goofed up. We're at a standstill. I thought by drilling that hole that would be stable. When I turned the stand over, I realized that wasn't going to work. So I just went back to the house and ordered the other stands. So they'll be next week before I get them. Uh, the other pads because I'm not going to pay $50 just to get them tomorrow. It's just not worth it. So I'm just going to turn them over. I'm going to put the other two on and maybe just clean up, move stuff around so we can get the lathe up here somewhere close. So we've hit a standstill. Alright, this is the lathe out of the box. And uh, now it's still something in the bottom crate. I'm just tucking the sides off. It's still on the caster so we can roll it around. And I've got one one strap on it to see how much what I'm going to do about strapping. Uh, the, this is for, uh, Thursday, same day I've done the walk down here. So I've been working basically all morning. And um, I'm to a point now that I can pretty well quit done all that I'm going to be able to do. One of the things I've noticed about this lathe and mine and right off that I like is that it's got uh, excuse me, I got another gear. Um, it's got uh, bolts in the chuck so you can turn the chucks over. That, that's, that's a nice thing right there. Uh, I know it's got the D15 spindle one, two, three, four, five. See one, two, three. Says D one five. That's six pins. Say it's supposed to be D15. Oh, D16. But anyway, so there we go. If I ordered wrong backing plate from Grizzly, I'm going to be sick. But I ordered a backing plate to make that uh, collet chuck with. And I thought it was a D15. I see six pins. So, maybe yep. But I thought the literature said D15. So, uh, we will see. That's the four jaw chuck. It's in the box. Alright, I'm going to cut this camera off. I'm going to pick these cardboard boxes up. And i got to get out of here today. Right, I'm going to step back. Hopefully you can see me in here in the shop. I'm not doing a, a look-see. Uh, this is where we're at on the Grizzly today. This is this week's. Uh, this is going to come out sometime over the weekend when I get a chance to set down at the computer. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go to Asheville with my girlfriend, ex-fiance. She's got some issues and she's going to the VA in Asheville tomorrow. And we're going to be probably up there all day. And uh, I'm not sure where well, she may have to stay a few days in the hospital on the medical side. Of She's having some digestive issues. It's really throwing her a little. Um, I hope you enjoy this week's video. Uh, uh, this is this is what we're gonna put out. This is where we're at. Uh, next week we hopefully uh, hopefully by next week I'll have it up. I'm still undisarting. Uh, that thing's got to be turned to be fitted in there, so I'm hoping that's going to work. We're going to look at it close this week to see if we can get it in there where we want it to be. And uh, if not, we'll have to go back playing beef. So, uh, y'all just have a great day.